Hey everyone, welcome to this special edition outside of my normal video posting video on Steven Inks. My name is Steven and today I'm trying a little bit of an experiment, which is the reason for the special posting of this video. What I did was last week I opened an account with Fiverr, which is a freelancer website, to make available sketches that I'll draw for people who are my subscribers or people who just enjoy my artwork. Uh, in an attempt to make sure that I um, do this at an affordable cost, I have a couple of rules and stipulations, one of them being that your prompt has to be in 10 words or less. You'll be able to find more details in the link that I posted down in the description of this video, but what I decided to do to test this out was I asked on my community tab for some prompts in 10 words or less, so today we're going to draw the responses that I got from you and I'm also gonna send those digital files out to the people who were so kind to participate in this experiment with me. So let's uh, have a look at it and we'll um, see how it goes. The first prompt is A Mouse Who Befriends a Cat by Jessica Cho. Um, in order to do this drawing, I used my Platinum 3776 filled with Noodler's Walnut and that's what I used for the first three drawings, the ones that I did the uh, time-lapse video for. Um, in, and also in the future, if you uh, use this Fiverr service to get a drawing yourself, it's gonna be with whatever pen I have inked up and ready to go. Um, so it's kind of a grab bag. So I, I also wanted to go into a little bit of a, an explanation of why I'm choosing to do this um, Fiverr thing. I just thought it would be an interesting way to try something new when it comes to making art for people. Custom art, as you know, is pretty expensive, or maybe you've uh, you've attempted to purchase some before and found it to be too expensive for you, or um, just you might guess that it's expensive. And I'll talk a little bit more about why that is uh, later on in this video. But um, I thought, actually, uh, for me, when I do commissions or custom art pieces, which I do and I, I still do in, when people ask me to um, through contacting me through email or on my website, um, all those that are linked in the description of this video, uh, but it is kind of a long, a little bit drawn out and sometimes a stressful process for the reason that um, you do a lot of sending the drawing out. This is what I'm gonna do, talking to that person. They say, no, I want this, not that. And then it goes back and forth for a while and you usually end up spending, oh, anywhere from um, six weeks to several months doing something, depending on how particular the client is. Um, and uh, while that's all well and good and I'm willing to do that from time to time, I do expect to be compensated to a higher level for that. But if someone gives me a couple of words and I do a sketch with whatever's in my head and whatever pen I have in my hand, I could see doing that for uh, a little bit more of a reasonable price. And um, that's also the reason why I am digitizing this artwork and sending digital files as the base level um, for these commissions. So if you want to have me send you the artwork, the original piece, um, then you can do that, but there'll be an extra charge and there'll be an extra charge for a few other things like um, doing a time-lapse video like this and um, other things you can check out in the link below. But the base idea is to be able to do a quick, cheap drawing and a digital file sent out to you. And I think for people who really like custom artwork but are kind of budget um, concerned and not able to spend as much as maybe um, you might expect, I thought this might be an interesting idea. So um, that's my interesting idea. And here's my drawing of a mouse who befriends a cat. Um, and uh, I had a lot of fun drawing this. It was really not stressful. And, um, and I, I kind of liked the way that it turned out. Uh, so yeah, I hope you appreciate it as well. So for my second prompt, this is gonna be a long one. It's a neon sign representing a cave drawing 
Inside a Cave, and that's by Ichiro Fake Name. Uh, someone who comments on my videos a lot. I've enjoyed all those conversations. So this was a really kind of bizarre and out there prompt. I, w I had a lot of fun playing around with it. Um, which leads me to kind of the subject that I wanted to explore. And we have a little time because this drawing took me longer than the other one. Um, why does art cost so much in the first place? So um, you may be thinking as a person who may work in a different industry, and I work in a different industry as well, I'm a teacher, um, you don't get to charge the same rate for artwork that you do for say, uh, teaching a science class or um, as a, a plumber, an electrician, um, a consultant, that sort of thing. So why is it that artists gets to charge so much? Why is art so expensive? Well, and there's really two answers to this question. And I'm gonna tackle the first one um, for over this drawing right here of the uh, neon sign cave painting. And for the last drawing, I'll talk about the other reason. But the first reason has to do with uh, the amount of time that it takes to become good at art. Um, most artists like me have spent most of their lives in some capacity drawing, learning to draw, spending time drawing, and even in some cases like myself, making some sacrifices, um, personal relationships, personal time, uh, what time you get up in the morning, what time you go to bed at night, and you know, being tired at the end of a long day wanting to um, watch TV and relax, but instead doing a drawing. And for who? You know, in the very beginning of your career as an artist, you'll find that you're not really making art for anyone, you're just kind of making art. And what you're doing is you're building the skill that you need to be a good artist, to be to the point where someone might actually ask you uh, to make something for them and want to pay you money. Uh, a lot of times you get some combination of that at first, like that someone wants you to draw something for them, but they're hoping that you won't ask them for money. Um, and that's one of those kind of, not that rare, uh, slightly insulting situations that a lot of artists get themselves into um, in their careers. But the question again is, um, why do artists get to charge so much? And uh, the answer really lies in all the time that it's spent to get up to the final product. When you pay for someone's art, you're not just paying for the time it took them to draw the thing that they're drawing or paint or whatever the medium is, but you're actually paying for all the time that they were building those skills and they weren't getting paid. If you think about it, if, if I, as someone who is older than 30 but younger than 40, um, spent up to this point in my life um, doing art and making very little money, as I do, uh, if it ever came to the point where I made enough money off of art to make it a worthwhile investment financially, um, then it would have to be, I'd have to be making up some of that money from that time that I was working for free building those skills. So when you are um, asking an artist to work for you, you're actually asking them um, to use the skills that they built all the time that they weren't working for you. And some people might say, well, you know, I don't want to pay for the, um, the work that they did when they were not working for me. Well, if that's the case, then, you know, um, you could try and get some art from a me who did not work hard, like uh, someone who draws like how I drew when I was, say, 12 years old, without the 15, 20 years of experience that I've had trying to build up my skills. Um, but I would be willing to bet that 12-year-old me draws just about as well as you do um, or you did when you were 12, not very well. And if it's worth it to you, um, I'd say uh, do it yourself, you know? Um, and if it turns out great, then that's awesome. But if uh, you have the skills to be a great artist, you probably know all the work that it takes to create those skills. So that's one of the reasons why art costs so much. And when you're, draw when you're uh, buying a piece of, of custom artwork or if you're buying a piece of original artwork from an artist, you would expect to pay sometimes more than you would think. Um, so there are different ways that artists uh, try to deflect this cost or make it so that the individual person doesn't have to pay so much. 
Uh, one of them is by doing prints where it's not the original artwork, but it's a copy of the artwork so they can get the equivalent of what it's worth for uh, that amount of money. That usually only works if you have a really large following of loyal fans who purchase your work and it allows um, artists to charge uh, kind of more the expected amount for a piece of artwork. These days uh, you go to the, to the store, um, even like a Target or a, um, a Walmart, if you will, and you see artwork everywhere. Artwork is on t-shirts. Artwork is on products that you buy, not for the artwork, but for product contained in it. And we get kind of used to it and we think, oh, it's fairly common. But the reason that that artwork is not being charged so much is because it's spread out among uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of products, each one earning that little tiny bit that makes it worth it for an artist to invest their time in it. Um, so yeah, those are some of the reasons why art costs so much and uh, some of the things you might consider when you're um, trying to get an artist to do art for you. Anyway, um, that's, uh, that's all I really had to say about that particular part. And uh, as you can see, I'm still not quite done with my cave drawing, doing the rock textures ended up taking the brunt of my time, but I was having a lot of fun with that, so I spent the extra time, you know? And it's it's interesting, you know, uh, as an artist, you charge the same for a piece of artwork that took you um, three hours to do as opposed to one hour. Um, it's not like we make an hourly wage, but we kind of have an agreed upon uh, value to what our art is worth worth and that does change over time as well so it's a really tricky system um, pricing art and I understand why it a lot makes a lot of people confused anyway this is the uh, final drawing for the cave painting in neon lights um, I hope you like it Right, so the third and final prompt that I did a video for was uh, for my version of Charlie Brown and Friends by Worst Skateboarder. Um, now I normally don't do uh, other copyrighted works and let's hope I don't get a copyright strike on this one, but I, I really do have sort of a soft spot for uh, Charlie Brown and the Peanuts gang. Um, Christmas is coming soon, at least at the time that I'm recording this video. The Charlie Brown Christmas special is one of my favorites. I watch it every year. And uh, everything I know about Charles Schultz tells me that um, from what I hear about him and how he lived his life, he seemed like he was a really uh, decent, good human being that loved what he did. And that's, that's a stretch goal for everyone in their lives. So um, my own little version is kind of angular and full of hatch marks because of my pen and ink style. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, there's one last thing that I wanted to talk about, what makes art so expensive? And this is what I'm trying to defer a little bit with this um, Fiverr sketch thing. Um, sometimes we forget how much time it takes an artist to create art because you see in in this case you're seeing this video you're seeing the whole kind of process um and it's sped up and a lot of people think this is how art gets made someone sits down uh pulls out a pen a paintbrush whatever puts some marks down and it just looks beautiful and gorgeous like magic um but even leading up to that point there's a lot of planning that goes into it there's a lot of com composition, there's a lot of um, uh, preparation. And then when you're doing custom art pieces the traditional way, like a, um, a commission, you are sending work back to the person saying, is this what you want? And then there's um, the reply, oh, actually, I want it a little bit more like this, and then you have to redo it. Um, or, oh, I want it a lot more like this, and you have to redo everything. Or sometimes even uh, when I've worked with some people, they've said things like, I don't know what it is that I want, but uh, not this. And then you just have to, you know, throw something at the wall and see what sticks. And so that's kind of why um, I'm having to do this one uh, 
this one shot sketch you send me a prompt and with no turnaround I just kind of do something and for that reason I'm able to keep it cheap because it doesn't include all that extra time uh, I, I know that um, that time it doesn't always make sense to to someone who's not sitting there actually doing the drawing but for an example the most commission I've ever been paid for a piece of art was a thousand dollars but I spent six months working on that piece of art so if you think about it I'm not getting paid a thousand dollars for one drawing it was actually two drawings but okay for for two drawings i'm getting paid a thousand dollars for about six months of work and i'll call it part-time work to be fair so maybe three months of full-time work if i was a full-time artist me making a thousand dollars in three months is actually not that much money and if you break it down to the hour by hour i actually did this when i did the original commission um it was about fifteen dollars maybe 12 to 15 dollars an hour I can't remember the exact number so that's just the other factor that goes into creating art and uh, me wanting to do these kind of quick sketches is a way that I can keep it cheap um, if people are interested in this I hope you'll check out uh, my link that's below in the video description um, and you can have something along the level of this kind of artwork right here uh, from your prompt um, and yeah uh, that's just taking some of the things that use up a lot of time and creative energy for me and make it kind of fun for me to do something like that. Um, anyway, I hope you like my explanations. I hope you like these drawings. And uh, before I talk about the digitizing process, I actually wanted to go into a couple of honorable mentions really quick. Two other comments I wanted to do. This is my superhero. He's a potato. Um, and this is an extraterrestrial birthday. Another request that was made. It was pretty cool and fun. Someone wrote, when out of inspiration, do a study of something on the internet. So I wrote, that's not what I meant. And uh, thanks for that. <laughs> that's uh, my commission there. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure how interesting this next portion of the video is going to be for those of you who work in traditional art. But... Um, this is the process I go about for digitizing my drawings. And as you can see, this is the actual drawing. And this is a photograph of the drawing. Uh, I'm using a, an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. And this uh, program is called Affinity Photo. It's kind of an alternative to Photoshop that doesn't have the subscription service that Adobe has. Um, so it's more affordable and I uh, really like using it. Uh, first of all, we're gonna go in and make some adjustments. The first thing I'm going to do is a brightness and contrast adjustment using these uh, sliders down here. I'm just going to boost the contrast. What I'm looking for, and I'm going to take some of the color out here, not really intentionally, but it, it will happen. I'm looking for this color, this paper to be a bright, consistent white. So for that, we are bumping the brightness and the contrast as well just to get it as clean white as we can. Um, and the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into these filters here and I'm gonna do a levels adjustment. Um, which may actually turn this uh, a bit black, which we can get that back later. But we want a really bright contrast between the black and white here. That ought to do. So from there, we're going to go in and merge the layers that are here. That gives us another layer at the top. And I'm going to actually delete these other ones so I don't need them. I can always go back to the photo I have that I took before if I don't like how this turns out. Um, and then I want to erase everything that isn't the white paper. So when I do that, I'm going to end up with sort of this um, it's too far. Uh, sort of this uh, checkerboard thing on the back, and that just shows me that the uh, that the transparent part of the photo is there. And later we're going to do something with that. 
this one. All right. So yeah, the idea is to make it look like the edge of the paper and anything that's not white paper just isn't there. So we don't need any of this table. We don't need the edges or any shadows. And that looks pretty good. Trying not to cut off any of the, um, the actual artwork. Uh, if I click on this box, I can also spread this drawing out so it's a little bit bigger takes up a little more of the space that's right here and yeah that looks good to me um, looking at this again I do think actually that I'm going to need to boost those levels a little bit more so I'm going up Some of this is a little bit of, it's a bit fiddly. You gotta kinda go back and forth until you get what you're looking for. Oh, that's better. Maybe darken that a little bit more. Okay, um, I don't know how you do this in other image processing programs like Photoshop or other things. If, if you know, leave a comment below for people who are using those things. Um, but the cool thing about Affinity Photo is that it has a filter in these filters here that is called, let's see if I can find it. It is called Erase White Paper. So we're gonna try it right now and see if I got it right the first time. Okay, that did not go. Um, oh, I know, I have to merge these layers again. I practiced this to see if I could get it right and I didn't. All right, let's try this. Okay, yeah, that looks really good. So when I look in, I see there's some smudging and blurring here that I can go in with the eraser. Cut off some of my lines there, but I think that's gonna be Okay, that'll be hard to notice. But I can clean up some of this stuff if I really want to. Um, didn't need to get too fiddly with this either. Some of that stuff is actually what gives your hand-drawn art a little bit of character. But that was a smudge that I was self-conscious about, so I wanted to get rid of it. Uh, everything else looks good here. So. Now that I have this as white, this kind of uh, transparent background, well, my next move here is going to be to recolor it so it matches. Um, so I'm going into my brush mode and I am going to select a color that I think somewhat matches the color from before. It is kind of hard to match these things exactly but it's a pretty warm color, not too dark. I think that's gonna do. Um, and I have Protect Alpha selected here, and you can that's alpha channel on things like Photoshop and a couple of other applications that kind of mirror what Photoshop does. And basically that means when I draw over the top of these lines, only the lines will get drawn over and that transparent space will stay exactly the same. Uh, so I have a really big brush. You can see how big that is. And when I swipe over this, you'll see it's changing color and it's just on the part where I did my lines. And so mm, I'm gonna compare this in a little bit. That might be a little too light, but it is somewhat along these lines, no pun intended. Um, I think a little bit darker than that, but that's the cool thing about digital work is that you can kind of fix things if you don't like what you did before. Not that I'm gonna go digital. I still love the feeling of a pen and paper in hand, but sometimes being able to do digital things does uh, have advantages. Like in this case, so I can send digital files all around the world without having to pay shipping fees. So uh, anyway, that looks closer to me. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, for perfect, you need the original, I suppose. 
but so the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going into my assets menu and I have some papers and I think I really like this paper. I'm going to insert it and you can kind of see. Uh, actually, no, I, I don't want that one. I want, let's go back. Um, I think maybe it's this one. Hmm. I'm just going to keep inserting things till I find the one that I was looking for. That looks kind of like, um, like old drawing paper. Oh, this one looks kind of like my watercolor paper. It's got that interesting texture that I like. So I'm going to go keep this one and this one, this one, and this one disappear. Um, I have to actually move this so it ends up um, in a different place because the digital things work on layers. All right. And so now I have the drawing and it's, it's on a, um, a piece of paper, but it still kind of looks like digital lines over a piece of paper. So one more thing that's going to enhance the effect is I'm going to go into the layer settings and change this uh, here from a normal layer to what's called a multiply layer. And if you go in, you can see, and it's not perfect, but it does look to me, especially from a, um, looking at the whole picture, a little more like it was drawn on that paper because it takes on some of the textures and qualities with the ink um, underneath the paper texture. It's a subtle, but um, essentially that's, uh, that's the game. That's how it works. Um, so this drawing as well as the other ones that I did are going to get sent out to the people uh, who responded to my uh, my poll on my community channel and I'm really excited to send these out to you guys so um, cool I hope that was informative I hope you had fun learning a little bit about my process and a little bit about the process of um, art commissions and what it means to hire an artist and what work goes into that um, and so uh, the reason that I posted this video outside of my normal posting schedule is because I'm not sure if this is something that people want or if it's uh, me self-promoting advertising for myself. So I just wanted to keep my regular schedule next week. I'll be posting a different video um, that I'm excited to share with you guys. But uh, I'll keep this going for as long as I want to do it and uh, people are interested in it. So um, if you are interested, you can click the link down below and check it out. And uh, please understand that even though I am making um, sketches available for pay, I still will be giving out sketches and postcards and things on this channel. It's something that I really like to do. This is just an extra way that those who are interested could consider supporting me or buying a gift for a loved one or, um, you know, uh, reinforcing an inside joke you have with your friends. Uh, I am an artist willing to do those things for you. Uh, in that vein, I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I'm feeling the love and support that I get in your likes and subscribes and your comments. Um, I just want you to know that uh, I hope you're doing well and um, I'll see you again very soon.